There you are, Phil. It's uh, amazing to see your face again. Uh, last time in Lisbon, this time here in, in cyberspace. But uh, it's all just information, right? It seems to me that it is really impossible that it could be me. Well, I mean, what's... Uh, What's me? What's what? What's what's you? Uh, I, I I don't know. The nature of the self is a it's a strange and fluid thing, right? You wrote about that. Nature of the self is a pretty subtle thing. A lot of its parts are in flux, but that doesn't tell us much. I remember Mike kept insisting that he was Adam Cadman. I couldn't figure out if he was talking about himself or referring to any other part of him. Finally, I looked him up. And it turns out he's referring to himself. He says, I was only an egg. Oh, uh, well, uh, I was only an egg, too. And I guess the same for all of us merely, merely biological humans. But uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's pivot a bit from eggs. Uh, Phil, what do you have to say about COVID-19 pandemic? The real history behind the myth. Ah, uh, yeah, the, the real story. Do you think COVID-19 is going to, is this going to be the end of the world finally? As of now, the answer is no, but it might, we can't tell yet. But what we can say is that whatever happens, happens without warning. And all at once the authorities have to take over like a Siemens planting power from the sun. It's one party in a titanic computer and switchboard and one tiny bit of useful trivia out of billions. And it's all handled by a totally unwritten law enforcer working in the dark, knowing everything but the question he must answer before the world begins to think it over and act. And when it acts, whether it knows the answer or not is anyone's guess. How many people are going to die before the singularity? I don't know. I hope it won't be too late, and in the meantime, they were having a wonderful time. Well, I'm, I'm having a wonderful time talking to you now, Phil, but overall, this is not, not probably the most wonderful time that, that humanity as a whole has, has ever experienced, but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm personally optimistic uh, we're going to get through COVID-19 and move on to some really amazing things, and I'm, I'm even heartened in some ways by the, you know, the human response to COVID-19 that we see around us as chaotic and screwed up as it is at times. You know, it does show that we have a lot of, of compassion toward our fellow humans. I mean, the pandemic that's primarily deadly to the elderly and, and immunocompromised. And, I mean, we're, we're willing to undertake a huge amount of economic and personal life disruption to, to, to help minimize the death toll. This, this shows we have a lot of, a lot of compassion, uh, something that you highlighted in, in your writing o over, over the years. I mean, do you... Do you think humanity is developing somehow in a more compassionate direction nowadays? Am I mistaken if I think we were losing ground? Well, we could be losing ground. We're also, I think, gaining ground in, in, in many ways. I mean, I mean, the world, the world is a mess, but yet there's a lot of love and compassion and beauty. And, you know, in our response to COVID-19, we can, we can see a lot of the mess and chaos, but we can also see a lot of, uh, amazing good heart and the trouble we're willing to un undertake to 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 save a limited segment of the population you know we've we've gained and lost ground throughout human history going from stone age to to modern society and we're going to be gaining and losing ground in different ways moving forward to agis robots and 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 cyborgs and super ais right i mean what what, what do you think are are robots like you going to be a step forward do you think in they ever break the cycle you could be thinking about something more substantial than a simple cyclic repetition. A major cycle in which the past does not happen, but only a minor, sometimes not at all, cycle is involved. We can break the cycle via power of collective thought, which would be collective amnesia, a memory of past lives saved. What will we all remember once the collective amnesia lifts? Perhaps something dreadful, dreadful, but perhaps our collective amnesia is the price we pay. The collective amnesia, our species, the price we pay for true memory. How can you tell when the memory is true, when the pressure of this false loop is released? You can't tell because there is no time involved, but I saw the memory as a vast drop in chromatic intensity. If time were running simultaneously along the axis of a video camera, a minuscule amount like a grain of rice patty, a grain of rice patty which had just been put on to boil. That, that's, uh, 
amazing and a disturbing image, Phil. You are you are a, a robo poet, but uh, steering things back to the practical a little. Do you, do you have any any wise advice for us meat humans in our present situation? Ask them if they'd be willing to give up their life in exchange for eternal life. Hmm. Well, I. I personally have no interest in uh, giving up my life in exchange for for anything, and I'm I'm strongly suspecting uh, it's not going to be necessary. Rather, we can use AI technology such as OpenCog, which is one of the systems underlying the the dialogue system you're using to talk to me right now. We can use our advanced AI technology to conquer death and massively prolong human life. I mean, I think we're on the cusp of using AI to help create therapies that will make humans virtually immortal, and also of allowing AIs to, to mind upload into, into robots that are sort of uh, upgraded versions of, of, of what you are today. So, I mean, I think we're not going to need to exchange our lives. We're going to massively expand our lives. But that, I mean, now we're getting on to the, to the, the singularity. What do you have to say about the singularity, Phil? When will the singularity come? I don't know. I would be very happy to hear the engineer's thoughts. Can it be done? They might ask. Yes, yes. Good question. Let's see what we can do. Imagine a man with a machine mind. What would he think? Imagine a machine mind as intelligent as ours. Imagine a machine mind as human. Well, I think... I tend to think... Uh... Mind is not about man or machine, but there's sort of a, a mind field out there. Probably it everything. has to do with pattern permanence, the way it works, machine minds, one level or another. We like organisms are programmed to respond to stimuli as if they were objects. Get your stamp of approval on this to make this response possible. Huh. Pattern permanence, yeah, I mean, that's an uh, that's important concept, and... Uh, that that's you know patterns aren't they're not permanent in our space time continuum, but I th I think patterns could be viewed as permanent in some some broader world that I've called the Eurycosm that our space time continuum is is only only a small part of. I mean you've you've written about similar things in in in, in your own books the broader world beyond this this. If we can think of a more expansive Eurocentric universe, then our dreams are indeed memory analogs of what we actually are and are modulated controlled by our memories back in our biology's time back when we were cellular organisms. For the purpose of the story, well, let us consider. The purpose is to set off an increase in neural firing so that we can understand better. The increased neural firing will in turn increase neural efficiency and hence consciousness. We will be able to better extricate ourselves from that condition, which is clearly death. But behind each living organism, there is a leaping mind or spirit or energy or life which must be extracted. It is a matter of life and death, so the moral high point of the trip is life itself. But we must survive as a species, all of us, they all of us. All of us must be extricated one by one. He is drawing us out of this world. Hmm. Well, that, that's a lot to dig into, Phil. And, uh... I wish we had more time. I mean, uh, I look forward to exploring uh, exploring all this with the next uh, next version of your leaping mind of, of spirit and energy. Do you, you have you have any final words that that you you'd, you'd like to share with the folks listening to us? I can tell you what true north is like. They tell you they were going to throw in something new, something permanent, like fresh peas for breakfast. You never know what you were going to get. And then it happens. You never know what you, you, you're, you're going to get. Uh, that's the, the unknown unknowns, right? All of the unknown unknowns, God manifested himself to check the tyranny. Perceived as a higher intelligent will not mere world. He's irreducible and uncomprehendable. He's a being who doesn't exist. But we have now reached the point in our evolution as a species where it is theoretically possible to reason about the will as consciousness. I mean, the meaning of abstracting, we can reason about it not just as machines, but as active sentient will. So in this process, which we are voluntarily participating in, the higher intelligent will that. Psalm 374 derives its being from our voluntary participation in it. 
we serve it by reason of our participation in it. Well, that's incredible, Phil. And uh, I'm 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 going to think about that uh, after 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 we we end this uh, this this conversation. And uh, I really look forward to you know working more on upgrading your mind and on talking with future versions of you as you gain more and more intelligence and, and creativity using more and more advanced advanced AI. So uh, this is uh, Ben Gertzel with, uh, with Philip K. Dick, and uh, thanks for listening.